We're starting a great new series, uh, Casper on the King's Indian. It's going to be a 10-game series with Casper playing black in in every game. And uh, Casper, who's arguably the best player of all time, um, he, he was an expert on the King's Indian, and for a long time that was his main weapon against D4. Later on he started to shift a little... Uh, adopting the Grunfeld and um, even later again at, at the end of his career he was playing the super sol solid Slav variation but it, to me the Kings Indians always sort of been vintage Kasparov just because of the pure aggression uh, you know related to this opening now we're going to start with a classic game that he played against Jan Timmen, and then interestingly in uh, round two we'll have a look at um, Florin Giorgio's attempt to to improve on Timmen's play just um, getting himself into more trouble. So Timmen started with d4, knight f6, so e5, knight c3, Bishop g7, e4, d6, and we've got our king's Indian. Now, f3 was played by Jan. It's also the favourite of Anatoly Karpov's, and uh, it's called the Samish variation. White's basically constructing a very solid centre by overprotecting his e pawn. And later on, he's also got the idea of a kingside attack with the move g2 to g4. Also, he would like to put his bishop on e3. And by playing f3, black can't play knight g4 attacking the bishop. Interestingly, Gufeld, who was a very strong Russian grandmaster and a king's Indian expert, he never really believed in f3 because... Um, it, in his opinion, it takes away the natural square for the knight, that the knight on g1 should go there. But, I mean, that's very sort of superficial thinking, and actually I really like playing the same issue as white. So Kasparov castled. Bishop b3, which is still, together with bishop g5, the main continuation. And now, interestingly, Kasparov played e5, which was a variation he quite liked. Um... And now White has a choice. He can play knight to e2, trying to maintain his center, or immediately gain a spatial advantage with d5, which was the choice of Timmons. c6, bishop d3. Now, this system is um, responsible for causing black quite a few headaches. The point is that normally in the same ish variation, white's going to castle queenside. However, in this position, white's aim is to in fact stir things up by castling kingside instead. Now normally black wants you to castle kingside because he's going to go for an automatic attack after, for example, take, take, knight e8, knight e2, f5. If castles f4, bishop f2, and either g5 or h5 first, perhaps. If g5, white might play g4. Now g4 is not possible here, fg, and I can't play hg because rook takes f3, so that's nice. So you can play, you can play g5 straight away. And next you're going to play h5 and g4 and gain a kingside attack. And that's what black normally plays the king's, uh, king's Indian for, to play f5, f4 on a kingside attack. However, in this in current position, after f5, white has a strong continuation. e takes f5, g takes f5, and now castles. And the problem for black here is that it's difficult for him to attack the white king. If he plays f4 like before, bishop f2, 
there's no real mate here because you haven't got an extra pawn to go g5, g4. And positionally, white has now a big advantage because he has an outpost on e4. In the endgame, black is lost with a dead bishop on g7. If, if uh, black doesn't play f4, white has a few nice plans. Sometimes white can even play on the king side himself with g4. Sometimes he might want to play f4. Otherwise, white will slowly build up on the queen side with rook c1, a4, maybe knight to b5. And again, it's difficult for black because his counterplay, his mating attack, is not really there. So confronted with quite a dangerous system, Kasparov made a very Kasparovian choice. For those of you that have listened to some of my previous lectures where Kasparov was featured, you'll notice that I emphasized his, his desire to, to get into positions where he always has chances, or another way of looking at it is Kasparov's desire to avoid positions where he could end up passive. Now, as, as we've just seen, if you just play standard play with knight e8 and f5, there's a good chance you get a position where it's difficult to make anything of it. Now, Kasparov has always preferred to sacrifice material as long as he thinks he's going to have the initiative. And that's what he does now with b5, a very interesting pawn sacrifice. Logically, Timon captures the pawn, cb5, c takes d5, e takes d5. And now we see the real point of Kasparov's pawn sacrifice. It's the further sacrifice, e5 to e4. Now I remember going through this game a long time ago and being really impressed by this concept. If f takes e4, you can immediately attack with knight g4. Queen d2, f5. If knight f3 now, knight takes e3, queen takes e3, f4. Black has a very nice game, for example, queen d2, knight d7. And black has excellent positional compensation for two pawns. His bishop on g7 is now entering the game. He has an outpost on e5. If black castles, if, if Timon castles kingside, Kasparov can attack g5, g4. Queen h4, then g3, and it's virtually mate. If Timon castles queenside, then just simply a6, opening up the lines, knight coming to c5, bishop on g7, gunning down. Very difficult for white to play. So Tim incorrectly took on e4 with the knight. Knight takes d5. Bishop g5. Queen a5 check. Bishop d2. Sorry, queen d2 was played. Bishop d2, then Casper plays queen b6. Queen takes d2. Bishop takes d2. Bishop takes b2. Rook b1, bishop g7, knight e2, knight d7, knight takes d6, it's all fairly forced, knight c5, bishop c2, and after that fairly forcing maneuver, Maneuvers. After those fairly forcing maneuvers, now we're into an end game, where Kasparov is still a pawn down. On the other hand, he has very active pieces, and White's minor pieces are actually a little bit uncoordinated. Now, after Kasparov's next move, Bishop e6, which completes the development of his minor pieces. We see that he's going to have a bishop on e6 and a bishop on g7, putting quite a bit of pressure on white's queen side. So there's a good chance he's going to win that a2 pawn, after which material is equal anyway. Additionally, black is, is going to gain extra time because his rook is going to go to d8, hitting the knight. His other rook is going to go to c8, after which the bishop on c2 is in some sort of trouble. So there's also a chance of gaining further time.